Hello ladies and gentlemen, Root Beer here, and I'd just like to give a special hello to anyone watching for the very first time. We're going to start another math contest uh, in this series of videos. We're going to be starting the Grade 7 2007 Gauss Paper. Now there's a Grade 8 Gauss Paper and a Grade 7 Gauss Paper. They're both multiple choice contests, but the Grade 8 one's a little harder because you got another an, uh, an extra year of math, so they make it just a little harder. As I always try and do, I'm going to encourage you guys, click the very first link in the description. It's not for me, it's for you guys. Uh, you can get a copy of this contest for yourself, download it, print it out, try it out with a friend, uh, try it out on your own if you want to. Uh, also, you know, the grade 7 math ones, uh, grade 7 and 8, I tend to also recommend you could probably try them with your parents. Okay? And you might even beat them. Uh, because it's been a while since they've seen this sort of stuff, but it's it's not at the the high school level where things get harder and they will have forgotten that stuff. Um, so you can have a little race there. But if you click the first link in the description, you will get a copy of this 2007 Gauss paper. Okay, let's let's look over this Gauss paper for a moment. Uh, these are made by the uh, CEMC Center for Education in Mathematics and Computing. They're a part of the University of Waterloo. Bunch of fine folks there. And uh, here we've got all the fine sponsors. Usually we ignore this part, but it is nice to see that we've got a lot of uh, interested companies that sponsor these things because they know that encouraging math and, and, and problem solving is great for business and really great for the whole economy of the country. But uh, that's thinking a little too big. Let's, let's skip over the, the supporters there. And uh, we're going to look. Uh, we've got one hour, so if you do print this out and try it on your own or, or race your friend, Give yourselves a time limit, time limit of one hour. If you give yourself five hours to do a one-hour contest, you will find that it's a lot easier and you won't be as prepared for writing the contest this year. Uh, calculators are allowed, uh, although I believe they're supposed to be in the non-programmable, non-graphic calculator. So if you've got one with sort of a basic display like this, you should be fine. Uh, and uh, we just skim through the instructions. It's a good idea for you to read all the instructions for any contest you do, but... We're just going to skim them here. You know, boring stuff like don't open the book until you're told to. We, we don't need that for this video series. Uh, important things to note, there's always going to be five possible answers. Only one of them's correct. And that's something you need to bubble in. Other important things to know about are, are the scoring, especially that there's no penalty for an incorrect answer and a blank question is worth two marks. So if you don't know, don't guess. And, you know, I'll leave you guys to, to read the, the rest of these, and we can jump into our very first question. So it'll be part A. If we get this right, it'll be worth five marks. If we can't get it, we leave it blank. We got two marks, and that's just, that's fantastic. In fact, if you read the rules carefully, if you answer no questions at all, you just show up the day of the test, you write down your stuff, and you leave everything blank, you get 20 marks out of 150. And that's enough to beat a lot of people, actually. Um, a lot of, I, I find that a lot of schools rather sadly force a bunch of students to uh, write these and they, they treat it like an actual test but they don't know what's going on. They just bubble in randomly and, and you can get zero uh, without even thinking about it. But if you just leave everything blank, 20 free marks. That's awesome. But we want to do a little better than 20. So uh, we're, we're going to jump in. We're going to do question number one and then the next video question two and so on. So question one is designed to be the easiest thing you ever did see. And uh, for most of you out there, this probably won't be particularly hard. But question one, the value of 4 minus 3 in brackets times 2 is. Now, you can probably just enter that in on your calculator and you'll get the answer of 2, no sweat. But I like showing my work a little bit. So let's, let's go through this a little bit. So we've got uh, 4 minus 3 times 2. So this is very much an order of operations question, and what do we remember to do? We do the things in parentheses or brackets first. So what's 4 minus 3? I know I know subtraction is lower on the order than multiplication, but, but the brackets bring it sort of up in precedence. So 4 minus 3 is 1. So 4 minus 3, we, we change that to a 1. The times 2, we haven't done anything with that yet. And then 1 times 2 is 2. Anything times 1 is just that anything again. So our final answer is going to be 2, and we would bubble in B if we actually had the bubble sheet that they give us. I don't, so I'm just going to write it down. But 4 minus 3 times 2 is, in fact, 2. Okay? And that's it. That's question 1. And uh, I hope question number 2 turns out to be 
just as easy if you want to. You can, of course, skip and bounce around. Take a look at the videos where I do the questions that you had trouble with on your practice uh, of this, uh, this particular contest. And if you're here for the challenging questions, you can skip right ahead uh, to questions uh, 21, 22, 23, all the way up to 25 when I get around to posting those. But in the next video, it'll be question number two. Thanks for watching.